first in HD. This is News 4 Tucson, live at 6. We begin with a look at this video now. It's hit the national media outlets. It was on NBC just moments ago. You see a young woman being pushed hard onto the ground by a Tucson police officer. It happened during the U of A upheaval on Main Gate Square. Uh, the riot erupted after the Wildcats lost in overtime to the Wisconsin Badgers in the Elite Eight of the NCAA tournament. Yeah, and that video was captured by a student as the girl was walking on the sidewalk. You saw she was hit hard and she fell onto what appeared to be a bench of some sort. Police Department's Internal Affairs Division is reviewing that video. But moments after the U of A lost to Wisconsin fans, just literally they poured mm -hmm. into the streets near Main Gate. The situation quickly escalated. The students were chanting, throwing drinks. Officers threw tear gas and they shot pepper balls. In the end, 15 people were arrested, nine of them U of A students. And today, Tucson police met to talk about how officers reacted to the crowd. News for Tucson's Lupita Murillo is live at TPD headquarters downtown tonight with the very latest on this Lupita. Well, Tom, I can tell you that TPD commanders were in a meeting most of the day discussing the incident that happened on Saturday. And as you mentioned, one of those internal affairs complaints was that video that's gone viral. Plus, there were two other complaints. It's really a no-win situation. I think you look at the outcome and there's no damage. You talk to some of the merchants, they're pretty happy with the fact that their windows aren't broken, there's no fire set, no one lost a vehicle in this event, and no one ended up in a hospital for this event. Yet some students claim TPD was way too aggressive. One student who didn't want to appear on camera says even before the game was over, TPD was lined up on the street wearing riot gear. No better way to get drunk college kids angry than to <laughs> say that we did something wrong before we did. I understand them at that point just sort of standing their ground, but that doesn't mean start unloading sand bullets and the pepper canisters, because that just seems too far for me. Chief BS New York tells me that they will be investigating the complaints, they will be reviewing videotapes, and they will be talking to witnesses, and then they'll be making their decision. Reporting live from TPD headquarters, Lupita Murillo, News for Tucson. Hey, Lupita, thanks. Now, you have a U of A student who's in a unique position spoke with News 4. Our Brett Bugansky shows you how and why he blended right in that night and was injured during the upheaval. New at 6. He may be young, yes, he's still learning, but take nothing away from Ethan McSweeney. He's still a journalist, and he got an inside look at the chaos from Saturday night. Getting a lot of good experience here. I love working here. It's, you know, it's my passion now. Between class, I've been covering the, you know, tuition proposals. Staying on top of university issues. Days when I'm on production, I'm here from like, you know, 11 in the morning until like, you know, midnight or 1 a.m. Ethan McSweeney cuts his teeth here at the student-run Daily Wildcat newspaper. People rushed into that intersection in front of them, started throwing beer bottles. The sophomore was in the middle of the crowd on University Boulevard Saturday night. We weren't expecting you know, things to get as crazy as they did, but we were just prepared for anything that happens. He was working as a reporter that evening for the paper. You know, I was hit by the pepper ball in the, uh, in the upper leg. McSweeney says his bruise has since faded, but he preferred not to show his reminder of Saturday to News 4. I had my press pass, but it, like, you can't blame the police for shooting me. It was, you know, I was in the middle of the crowd. I was a student. I looked just like a student. He is proud to show the work he and his staff of about five completed on a tight deadline. Yeah, I'd say I'll, I'd put this on a resume. <laughs> One positive from a very negative night. I asked McSweeney if he would have done anything differently Saturday night. He said, no, I expected to be in the middle of the chaos. I was simply trying to get the best sound and the best interviews from students. On the University of Arizona campus, Brett Bogansky, News 4 Tucson. And McSweeney also tells News 4 he didn't realize he was hit with a pepper ball until he looked down at his shorts. The Daily Wildcat also had their journalist inhale some of the pepper balls, but we're told they're okay. Now today, Kendall Washington White, who's the Dean of Students at the U of A, released a statement that says in part, the Tucson Police Department took the actions necessary to ensure public order, safeguard property, and protect people. 
The Dean of Students Office is providing support for U of A students who need assistance as a result of this incident. And any U of A students found to be in violation of the Student Code of Conduct will be held accountable. There's been a shooting on the Tho'ona Odom Nation involving the Border Patrol. Sources tell the News 4 Tucson investigators that there was a disturbance between tribal members and a Border Patrol agent near the San Miguel Gate around 12.15 this morning. We asked Customs and Border Protection about the shooting, and they tell us that the driver of a truck tried to run over an agent who was standing outside his own marked vehicle. The driver hit the agent's SUV, injuring him, so the agent fired back, injuring two of the three people inside. They were taken to a local hospital. The FBI and the tribal police are investigating. Several law enforcement agencies are searching for an inmate who escaped the Federal Correctional Complex satellite camp in Tucson. The Federal Bureau of Prisons says 28-year-old Adrian Perez was discovered missing at 10 o'clock Sunday night. It's unclear how he walked away from the facility. He was serving a 37-month sentence for possession with intent to distribute marijuana. Homicide detectives with the Pima County Sheriff's Department have made two more arrests in a weekend home invasion near Three Points. Saturday morning, deputies say multiple suspects went to a home on Kestrel Road. A neighbor heard someone in distress and went to investigate, and police say he ended up in a shootout with one of the armed suspects, 26-year-old Luis Lupercio, who later died. The deputies arrested two suspected accomplices, 17-year-old Robert Pryor and 20-year-old Osvaldo Carrillo Valenzuela, both are charged with first-degree murder. And today they also arrested 18-year-old Forrest Lupercio and 16-year-old Daniel Mancia Range, who will be charged as an adult. They face one count of first-degree murder. Search warrants also led to the arrest of 19-year-old Alejandra Robinson for possession of a dangerous drug. She is charged with having 36 grams of methamphetamine and 13 pounds of marijuana in her possession. Well, still no word on the identity of a woman who was found dead in a midtown apartment on Sunday. Her body showed obvious signs of trauma, though, inside the apartment near Blackledge and Geronimo. A neighbor checking on her made the discovery, but also inside there was a child alone, alive and unhurt. We have new information tonight on a murder in the foothills. The News 4 Tucson investigators obtained court documents with new charges in the murder of Doris Clark. Her former live-in boyfriend, Myron Fletcher, is accused of killing her. He's charged with second-degree murder, domestic violence, and the concealment of a body. According to court documents, Clark suffered multiple gunshot wounds. Police arrested Fletcher after detectives found her body during a welfare check. Investigators say there was evidence leading them to Fletcher, who was at Palo Verde Hospital at the time. All right, in Putin for weather, I'm meteorologist Matt Road, and yes, the days are getting longer. Tomorrow, the first day of April after 6 o'clock, and the sun's still shining. However, starting to lower on our horizon. You're looking in high definition at our News 4 Tucson Skynet camera. 80 still at our Midtown Studios, and we're 80 at the airport. 79, last check. Davis Monthan Air Force Base. Rest of southeastern Arizona, there's some 60s popping up on the weather map. Bisbee, you're 67, 72 in Pierce, and it's currently 73 degrees in Nogales. And the winds uh, on the breezy side in some spots. East Siders, 14 miles per hour, and we are down to 17 miles per hour in Douglas. However, you saw a gust of 40 earlier. Mostly clear skies, but that will change as we are tracking another weather maker that's going to crank up our winds again. We'll keep things breezy at 7 tonight by 9 and 11 down through the 60s with uh, less in the way of winds. I'm back in a few minutes. We'll talk about April 1st weather. No fooling. See you in a few. Okay, Matt. <laughs> thanks. And coming up on News 4 6, still not signed up under the Affordable Health Care Act. It is crunch time. You have until midnight, and local organizations are helping people sign up right now. Also, area students are spending a day in the shoes of Cesar Chavez. And a change in the works for what's often our visitors' first impression of the city. First in HD, this is News 4 Tucson.